Hey budget nerds, let's shift back to networking for a bit and check out a point-to-point -point wireless bridge setup and see what they're all about. See if they work and see if they're worth your money. Thanks for tuning in. UV sent over the CPE-71C kit to review. I'll take them apart, literally, and see what they can do. They come in at a hundred bucks or a bit less with the coupon. What they'll do is let you extend your network and in turn your internet, if applicable, to another location far away. Say a detached garage, shed, barn, or any building or location within a claimed three kilometer range. One will connect with the other wirelessly, and just like that, you are connected. They also support connecting several points to one single point, and are made in China. In the box you get the manual, which is okay. While it does cover the basics, it doesn't cover everything. This part here is also backwards, so it's a manual you have to study for a bit to understand. You get two 3 feet Ethernet cables, two little PoE adapters to power the devices and to connect them to a network, some cable ties to help with mounting, and lastly you get both wireless points. They feel solid, but do give off an inexpensive cheap plastic feel. I guess it doesn't really matter too much what they feel like because you'll mount them and then never even think about them, let alone touch them again. Every time I pop off this cover, I think I'm going to snap something, but it manages to survive somehow. Under this cover, you have a power plug, shift reset button, a switch to change its setting from slave to master, a channel indicator, and the ethernet port. This specific kit doesn't come with the DC power adapter because it uses these PoE adapters to provide power to the units. They provide 24 volts passive power, at a half an amp. I could not power them with my PoE switch, however it could work if your switch can provide 24 volt passive power. The build quality is okay, but some of these seams don't line up well, and there are some blemishes in the plastic. These things will function in one of three ways. You can use them as Wi-Fi repeaters, access points, or what most people will use them for, to bridge a network connection or as they call it in the settings, station. When they connect with one another, the flashing light will turn solid green. To pull up their configuration page, you would plug the unit into the PoE port on the adapter and plug the ethernet cable from the adapter's LAN port to your computer. You'd change your computer's wired NIC address to some address within the 192.168.211 range as long as it's not the unit's address, which by default is either .40 or .140. The default password is admin. Once you figure out how to change the language, you can see the basic stats of the wireless bridge, see access point information, ARP, info, logs, and stuff like that. Over on the left, you can get more menu options like wireless, where you can change the wireless mode these operate in. They come already paired out of the box in station mode. Here you can change typical wireless settings. In access point mode, it will provide you with 802.11n Wi-Fi with support for WPA2. We'll test some of this stuff later. For now, let's move on. You can change advanced wireless settings like transmission distance, which it will regulate automatically. You can mess with TDMA priority in case you want to give some clients or wireless points more priority over others, set IP settings, VLAN settings, set up SNMP for monitoring and your typical system settings, along with a few helpful tools in the upper right like a tool to help you align the wireless points, a site survey tool along with some of your other typical network troubleshooting tools. And remember, all of this is powered by wireless AP bridge. Since these use the 802.11n Wi-Fi standard, your max speed you'll get out of them is 300 megabits per second. If you use them as access points or repeaters, 
In theory, you could get speeds close to this. It said I connected at that speed, but never got anything much over 92 megabits per second in a speed test. Even over my local network, they never did any better than 89 megabits per second. That is why the network card on this thing will only do 100 megabits per second. There's no need for the manufacturer to spend more money on a faster one if you couldn't really take advantage of it. So is it fast? Not really, but it is fast enough for the basics. Streaming media over this thing worked pretty well, as long as you stayed within its capability. 1080p media streamed great, and 4K media streamed fine as long as the movie you were streaming had a low enough bitrate. I tested using my 4K footage of the Oregon coast, I shot with my Femi X8 SE, and it had a bitrate of around 60 megabits per second, which is stretching these things. Because of this, the video did stop to buffer, and for this test they were right next to each other. For the default intended purpose to connect devices wirelessly, you plug one Ethernet cable into the port on the device, and the other end into the PoE port on the adapter. You then plug another Ethernet cable into the LAN port on the adapter, and then into the device you are trying to connect, like a laptop camera or whatever. Next, you more or less do the same thing with the other unit, plugging it into a DVR, switch, or router. Using this default station mode, anything you would connect with a really long Ethernet cable, or an Ethernet cable, you could instead connect with these. In access point mode, you can have it extend your Wi-Fi out about a mile if you'd like to. There is no DHCP server built into these things, so you'll most likely want to connect it to a router, or to a network with a router, or where there is a DHCP server present. Each one consumes 12 watts of power, so I would assume there isn't much issue with pointing this RF around your property. Well, enough of this nerdiness. Let's get them out into the field to test how far they will really go. They claim 3 kilometers, or 1.8 miles. We'll put that to the test. Here is the setup. Two laptops, some portable power stations to power them, and a few poles to help give them a good chance. Not ideal, nor super scientific, but it will give us a good idea of what they'll do. I drove out to a place where I wouldn't weird out too many people and set up shop. In the field, right next to each other, they got what I expected, averaging a 2 millisecond ping time and around 11 to 12 megabytes of transfer speed. This is our baseline. I then went for a walk. I stopped at several points along the path with speeds remaining pretty good. I'm sure I look pretty weird to anyone who's... <laughs> driving by. He's probably wondering what I'm doing. He's probably wondering what I'm doing. I'm sure they're wondering what I'm doing. So when I stop moving and set it up and really aim it at it, it actually does pretty well. After a bit of walking, I realized I needed more distance. I moved the stationary wireless point to a more inconspicuous area and then went for a drive instead. The max distance I could squeeze out of them was 1,520 meters, or just under one mile. Now that does fall pretty short of their claimed three kilometers, about half of it in fact. I think if I were to have mounted them higher up where there was line of sight, I could have gone a bit farther. One mile seems farther than you'd think when you're looking at it from the ground, while they didn't reach their 3 kilometer range, I still think they did decent. Better than I thought they would, to be honest. At this distance, the connection was barely usable. Tearing them down is pretty easy. You just have two screws under this sticker, and then it slides right out of its plastic coffin, which they claim is resistant to rain, dust, and freezing. You can see the circuit board and the large antenna, this chip is 512 megabytes of DDR2 RAM, with this one being the network controller, and this one the Wi-Fi controller, and this last one being what looks like Micron flash memory for storage. Go Micron! 
The main chip in the center is most likely a Qualcomm Atheros 9342 MIPS processor. Verdict time dictates that there are a few compromises with the UV kit. Build quality is acceptable, but doesn't really look or feel like a premium product. It's also not the fastest wireless bridge system out there, but it does work well within its own limitations. For 99 bucks, it may not be a bad option for basic internet and network sharing on your square mile property. However, you will need a power outlet where you plan to mount these. Moreover, in access point repeater mode, you wouldn't have to run an ethernet cable out to one of these if you didn't want to. Well, I thought these things were kind of neat and wanted to share them with you. If you choose to grab some, there is a link below and a coupon code you can use to save 15%. That is good until December 18th. Well, what do you think of these things? Is there a better set out there that you're using? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching.